Guess what day it is? Update day. Um, so Blackmagic just dropped an update for Resolve 17.4. It is currently installing. Let's talk about it. Quick note, this video, I'm gonna talk about what is super exciting to me. There is uh, tons of stuff in this update, tons of super specific stuff for like people working in high-end workflows and different stuff. I'm not gonna touch on all of that, but we're gonna walk through some stuff and I'm gonna tell you what I think is super exciting, especially for a lot of you guys. I first saw this update on Twitter and instantly uh, put out some of uh, my big picture highlights. I'm always on the lookout for that sort of stuff. So if you wanna hear from me first, check me out on Twitter, um, but a uh, full release and a little write-up for this update is also right on the front page of Black Magic Designs website. So you can always go right there. A link to that will be in the description. Now, as probably expected, the big title feature for this update is compatibility with the new Mac M1 chips, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. They've got some crazy claims about everything being so many times faster. We know those machines are crazy and the Resolve team has been on top of these updates um, for the past several versions and jumping on the M1 chip really quickly. So I'm sure these updates will be amazing on these super powerful systems. I have uh, no solid plans to grab one of these systems anytime soon. They're super cool. It's not in the cards right now. And if that makes you as sad as it makes me, consider subscribing. The next big feature they are hyping up is something that was actually announced by Dropbox recently as well, and that is this Dropbox Replay integration. Blackmagic did release a short video that touched on all of these updates as well. That's right on the main page of their website. And this integration looks really cool, especially if you're sending videos back and forth. There are presets for this Dropbox collaboration engine thing, so you can upload right to that. And if anyone makes comments or drops markers uh, in that system, it automatically adds those to your timeline. Pretty cool. Next, we've got some great updates for subtitling and captions. I haven't dove that much into subtitles natively in Resolve in the past, but if this is your jam, some cool updates there. Oh, hey, Resolve just finished installing. Let's start it up and see what that splash screen says. Awesome, what's new in Resolve 17.4? I did download the free version, by the way. I have a studio license, but there's one thing I'm very excited to check out specifically in the free version. But what they call out on a fresh install, you have the optimizations for the new M1 chips, uh, color management. Uh, those are some of those pro settings that I probably won't touch, but I would assume very exciting to some people. They've added some really cool features to their 3D keyer. They showed these off in those videos as well. Ooh, this is a big one. I talk a lot on this channel about fusion presets and templates and plugins, but Resolve also has the compatibility for audio plugins through VSTs. That stands for Virtual Studio Technology. I just Googled that. But there are a few different versions of these VSTs, and previously we were limited to VST2. In this update, VST3 support. This is exciting because there are so many people developing really high quality audio plugins that are meant to be used in all sorts of different software, and now so many more of these, especially some cutting edge presets, will be natively available in Resolve. I absolutely have to look back at the world of VSTs and see uh, what's available and see what I could easily slide into my workflow. This is this caught my eye right away. It's very exciting. Another big feature that caught my eye, YouTube video chapters. Export timeline markers as YouTube chapters or QuickTime chapters. I'm probably gonna test this on this upload. It's pretty cool. Right now, I don't know if there's a way to manually add YouTube chapters outside of adding those like time code links in the description. This is pretty cool. I'm curious whether it will take like the marker name into effect for naming these chapters. We're gonna have to test that out for sure. But this is super cool. I believe for this to work, you do have to uh, upload directly to YouTube as an export setting. But another feature they touted is increased uh, quality and optimization for that YouTube preset. Some new Resolve effects like Film Halation. If you're a Knives Out fan, you might know what Film Halation is. It's super cool. And then they really talked up in the notes as well, these text plus improvements. I had seen this as a request and it might not be something I use a ton, but for lots of different languages, specifically languages that are read right to left or you arrange vertically, Resolve can now work with those a lot better, which is gonna be great for people working in Resolve all around the world. We're all about accessibility. And hey, like I called that before, subtitle improvements, pretty cool. And hey, if you wanna learn more, click that and it'll load up the main Resolve page here so you can learn all about Resolve. Or if you wanna learn more about Resolve, that's what my channel is about. But hey, let's click continue and get on in there. 
While we're loading in, let me talk about some more stuff that caught my eye. Undo support for fusion effects and the text plus effect. This was cool. It was definitely pretty much a bug uh, because a lot of fusion effects and generators and even the title plus effect, uh, all that processing is really happening inside the fusion page, but is being brought to the edit page. So if you changed any setting in your text plus effect, uh, the normal undo functionality wasn't there. It looks like they've sorted that out. That's super cool. Oh man, there is so much I want to check out. First, one thing I haven't mentioned yet, but is very exciting for me personally, let me try something. I recently released a pack of uh, 50 text presets, and through some of the previous updates, I loaded all those up into a DRFX file. But there is one small thing that I'm super excited about in this update, and I'm going to see if it works bundled with DRFX right now. I made one small change. I'm going to double click this DRFX for these text packs. I'm going to click install. Ooh, ooh, something really small changed over here. Okay, this is cool. This is functionality that did exist on the Fusion page. Now it's in the edit page. Very awesome. I'm gonna have to do a lot of work looking back at all my text presets, but check this out. In the effects library, in titles, you now have this drop down menu. And if I click titles and scroll all the way down, you'll see it has added a new section, Sterling Supply Company, that's my company. And all of the text presets that were in their DRFX file are here in their own separate section that I've named, super cool. And if you drop this down, it's there as well if you wanna jump right to it. All things considered, this is a super small quality of life improvement, but I'm very excited, especially when I have made so many presets in the past and sometimes they can be hard scrolling through all of them. I've also purchased packs from some other creators and things can get messy in this effects library very quick. This will help a ton, especially as the marketplace for all these presets and templates and plugins expands like it absolutely will over the next year or two. That's very cool. One other small thing that I, I don't think I can super well demonstrate, but it might be a bug or quirk some of you have run into. If you have a folder full of JPEGs you just want to bring into a Resolve as images and say all of those JPEGs are just numbered one, two, three, onward and onward. If you grabbed all of them previously and dragged them into Resolve, it defaulted to recognizing those as an image sequence and it would bring it in as a video file. And you had to specifically toggle one setting uh, in the media page to get around that. But in this update, they did say auto identifying media stored sequential image formats as stills or clips. So it looks like that has been resolved. Let me mock something up really quick to demonstrate something I'm very excited about. This is some test footage from, from another video that I've brought in multiple times and just for fun, I'll tr toss some of these presets on over that. YouTube. And mute it. And then, hey, let's just drop a couple markers in here and see how that works. So we've got some markers. Hey there, how's it going? Ta-da. And let me just trim it there. And now I'm gonna jump to the deliver page. Now, one thing I'm not sure about, I'll have to see clarification and see what people are saying about this. It did say hardware accelerated H.265 encodes on free version on Windows. Now, hardware acceleration is a big deal that you get in the studio version. And normally how that comes up, it's, in, it's NVIDIA hardware encoding. So after you select a valid format, you get a little pop-up here that says like whether you wanna use uh, the native renderer or NVIDIA. This isn't coming up now, even under H.265, both for QuickTime and MP4. I'll have to ask around. It might be working in the background or something. It says it's there, so I know something is possible. I might report back. But let's move forward with our other very exciting thing. I'm just gonna name this something like 17 for YouTube test. Save that somewhere convenient. And I'm gonna click this button also, upload directly to YouTube. I'll name it like that same resolve 17.4 test description. Hi, 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 hi. And we are going to check chapters from markers. I'm gonna keep it this default blue and we'll keep this as a private video for now. If this works, I will probably use that on the upload of this video. So you might already know if it works. Let's try it out. Add to render queue, render all. Boom, our export is finished. I've never used this feature before at all to upload directly to YouTube. So let me check on that for you. Sure enough, we have that upload. It's still processing that HD. Let's see. Hey, hey, hey. 
Okay, this is very cool. So instead of working this in the metadata or something, it just takes your markers and tags that onto your description. So here I have my title and my description. I just typed out that hi, hi, hi. But underneath, I have those timecode markers. Now YouTube will recognize this and add those in as chapters. Important to note, it does default 000 to start. So now, hey, I have start. Hey there, how's it going? And then ta-da at the end. This is pretty cool. Right when you are editing the video, you are right in the middle of the content. It feels very natural right when you're wrapping up a video to just drop markers in and not have to worry about it on upload. At the same time, you're probably doing a lot of publishing details on the YouTube side, even if you use this for the initial upload. So weigh these measures, but this is definitely a cool setting. That's super cool. I have never done a video like this, jumping right on an update. It's very exciting and some of these things really stuck out to me. I'm very excited to have to go and retrofit a lot of my past presets for this really cool organization feature but it's super cool and it's gonna help all of you. Which of these updates are you most excited about? Are you actually picking up one of the new M1 Max and we'll get to use all of this power? I'd love to hear all of your thoughts in the comments. I'll be hanging down there for sure. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.